Sheldon Kennedy, um, seven minutes, geez, I hope I have yet, hello. Um, I'm going to start when I had a decision to make. Um, I had a decision to make whether I'm going to charge a junior hockey coach with sexual abuse or not. And choosing to do that uh, changed my life, but, but I think the bigger the bigger uh, question I had was, what am I going to do with it? What am I going to do after I charge this coach? And I mean, I needed to do it to save my life and be the dad that I always wanted to be. But <clears throat> what am I going to do with with uh, uh, the decision that I made? Am I going to stick my head in the sand, or am I going to make a difference? And I had nothing. About, I had. I knew nothing about child abuse. I knew nothing about sexual abuse. But I knew that uh, I wasn't alone because when I made my disclosure, it was front page news around the world and, and uh, um, it was like, you know, nobody, nobody had ever heard of it before. And so I knew I wasn't alone and, and I remember I, I had, uh, was in a quadding accident and, uh, out in the, the farm and, and I broke my femur in nine places. So I'm sitting... Lots of times to sit around, and, and I was sitting around, and I picked up the Globe and Mail newspaper in 1997, and I, and I saw uh, that I was the newsmaker of the year uh, in Canada, and I was reading some of the names and going down the lists, and there was prime ministers, and, and then I saw like Terry Fox and Rick Hansen. I'm thinking to myself, like, I made this list. I haven't even done anything. So I said, well, you know what? I'm rollerblading across the country, and uh, I remember telling my wife at the time, I'm rollerblading across the country, and I was on crutches. And uh, probably smoking a pack a day too at that time. And, uh, and away I went, right? I had no idea what I was doing, but I went. And, and to me, it's about action. If I had a thought about that decision, I probably wouldn't have done it. But I left. And that discussion, you know, we, we, hard, like we probably had you know, maybe $50,000 worth of sponsorships. And we raised, uh, we, we raised, uh, we were able to donate uh, a million too. And that was loonies and toonies that we, we raised from people that were telling us their stories. We were in Aboriginal communities, filling arenas. The first time we were able to talk about these issues, we were discussing from six-year-olds to 72-year-olds telling their story. But one thing I realized is the outcome was all the same. The outcome was the same. And so we finished the skate, and, and everybody that told me their story, I felt I had to fix them. And I didn't know how to handle disclosures. And uh, so anyway, I, um, I quickly realized that once somebody discloses uh, trauma, sexual abuse, whatever it might be, uh, that's not the end of it. It took me 10 years to get to a place to, to be able to discuss solution. And that's what it's all about. And I think that when we finished the skate, we thought, what are we going to do? Like, you know, and one thing I learned on that skate is people had no idea about these issues. They didn't understand them. And I felt that our best defense was education. And so we donated our money to the Canadian Red Cross at that time, and they were able to reach about 3.5 million kids with that donation across our country. And if you had a prevention program in your youth-serving organization at that time, that meant you had problems. Whereas because we were able to educate kids who then be, grew up to be adults, if you don't have a prevention program in your youth serving organization today, we're not signing up. And we've really come a long ways in that and that conversation around these issues. Who would have ever had Sheldon Kennedy talk about sexual abuse at a Walworth talk 10 years ago, right? Nobody. And I think that, you know, where I, where I come from with this is that I couldn't carry the, I carried a message, I took some action, but I couldn't carry the proper message until I took care of myself. And I think that that's the biggest piece. <clears throat> you have to take care of yourself. To care, because you can't talk about getting out the other side unless you actually get there. 
and I think that that's the biggest piece that I learned. And now we can talk about solution and, you know, and I just pinch myself all the time because, you know, when the Penn State fiasco had, I got two minutes, so hello. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we're down, we're carrying the message. I'm going to talk about Calgary. Calgary, in this city, we've created a child advocacy center in this city, and it's the first time in Canada we have working memorandums between Alberta Health, Calgary Police, Child and Family Services, the RCMP, the Crown Prosecutor's Office, and we've got a secondment from the Ministry of Education. That would have never happened in any other city but this city. We had great leadership, and what is it? It's about everybody pulling on the rope together. And to me, that's how we need to fight the issue of child abuse. And it's about reaching kids early. We do over 100 investigations a month. We have an opportunity to turn 100 lives around so they don't end up on the streets. And homelessness campaigns. 70% of the people end up in the street have been sexually abused. Can we not reach them here? Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>